Neurodivergent Podcast, hosted by Neurodivergent People. I'm Joy Amy Wigman. And I'm Murray Spear. And this is one of our topic episodes. So we take a topic uh, that's interesting to us as neurodivergent people and talk about how it affects people with neurodivergences. <laughs> um, so today we've decided to talk about food and our mm. relationship with food. Uh, <laughs> me, me and Murray uh, met up before recording today and we realized that we'd actually been talking for quite a while about how how we relate to food We're like well why don't we talk about that today um yeah there's a lot of food for thought hey. Hey. Oh, no. Oh, no. um so i actually picked up on a um a, a couple of things so um i was reading an article on within health.com um which is a it's an american website um, but it's about eating disorders um and in it, they quote a study that says that people with ADHD are three to six times more likely to develop an eating disorder, and that 37% of people with eating disorders are autistic. Ooh, uh, wow. Yeah, I found that yeah, quite that's, interesting. That's an interesting so I've got a. How, how are you with food, Murray? What's your relationship <laughs> to food like? Um, I definitely have some foods which I just. Yeah, I can't really stand them being in my mouth mm -hmm. and that's always been a thing even when i was little it was the courgette for courgette. example courgette when cooked wrong it's oh. just slime oh the it's slime like that snoz cumber bfg vibe which is like yes. i understand your pain giant man <laughs> yeah and I, I felt the same way about cucumber yeah, yeah. The that's interesting. Slime thing. yeah. and i still do got mul multiple textures in it yeah but that, that's for me yeah the texture thing is probably the biggest more than flavour. Yeah, mm. yeah, flavour I'm not too fussed with. It's the texture side of things, the sensory. Once it's in your mouth, it's like, yeah. Sometimes I will, I will just lick stuff to <laughs> kind of get a, Just generally, actually. I, <laughs> just I, generally. I, I try um, to not do it too much because it's not that socially acceptable. No. But I <laughs> have been known to just lick them so that it's going to have to go in my mouth. Right. Oh, like, so did this, sorry, like, yeah. is that like like Test uh, testing the texture? Or is it testing the flavour? I think it's a bit of both. And just uh, like yeah. a preliminary, like, hmm, what is this? But also, I just do it with like random things, or whatever. Sensory <laughs> interaction. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I've always had a weird relationship with food, and I was, was, and am still considered by my family to be a fussy eater. Mm. Like really fussy. Textures were a big thing. Yogurt with bits in it. Um, even like as a small child, absolute no no. And I still can't do like yogurt with like fruity bits in it because they're like gooey. Um, yeah, especially like strawberry when you've got the gooeyness oh, and then no. they've got seeds on it as well. But like I'm starting to notice things with my daughter because I've got a I've got a toddler, and I'm starting to notice things to do with food that I did as a child. And I know toddlers are, um, they're fussy anyway, they're, you know, they're exploring <laughs> things. It, yeah. But stuff like having bits in smooth food. So I was um, eating one of those like corner yogurts, one of those crunchy corner yogurts with yeah. the little chocolate balls in. Yeah. And she loves yogurt, absolutely yeah. loves yogurt. And she loves chocolate because she's a toddler. <laughs> and she came over to investigate. So I gave her a spoonful of it. And she pulled all of the chocolate bits out of her mouth and put them down so she could eat the yogurt because she couldn't bear the different texture in there. Yeah. Um, and that is definitely something I, I would have done as a child. <laughs> how, how old is she? She's one and a half. So yeah, she's already like definitely got that edge of exploring it and noticing things that are really like nope nope this is a no-no for the me have appeared. the icks have already <laughs> kind of appeared if there's something really that's sandwich. got the wrong texture so uh i gave a pasta yesterday and one of them was mm. i hadn't cooked properly and it was it was a bit hard mm. as soon as she hit that she wouldn't eat the rest of the pasta yes because now it's danger pasta yes yeah i just don't know whether it... <laughs> i used to have that with fish actually fish? yeah because you have tiny little fish bones mm. it's just like and going through this thing that's really quite soft and falling apart in your mouth and like well cooked fish should just be falling apart in your mouth mm. type of thing and then you go well i think so anyway any fish um chefs out there please feel free to correct me on that <laughs> um, but like you get to this you suddenly go oh now there's a spike in my mouth uh, why is yes. there this sudden it's spike? no longer safe <laughs> and it's no, it's longer, no longer safe, safe. like satsumas and oranges as well 
You're just like, ah, this lovely citrusy, mmm, and it's all squishy, and it's like, it's a pip, no, it's a pip, ugh, ugh. and he <laughs> spits out, and it goes through a window with the force that you spat out. <laughs> Am I an expectation thing with, like, Clementines and Satsunas? Because I, I love that, like, really sharp citrusy taste so yeah. when they're not that taste i get an um, automatic ick yeah. and then it puts me off eating them for a really yeah, long time because you get ones that don't have any flavor left. yeah i need the expect i have an expectation and if my expectations aren't met i get really upset yeah food the thing not tasting how it looks or you feel like it should mm -hmm. that's a yeah, it really upsetting. Like that. yeah and um i mean having talked to so my my other half has adhd and we uh, we both go to Slimming World. Other diet places are obviously equally as they also acceptable. exist. <laughs> they they also exist. Um, and we were talking about like uh, food and things like ADHD and um, about um, impulse control. Mm. So about not having um, a feeling for the consequences of something. Yeah. Um, which, which with food is is a difficult thing mm. when you're trying to hold on to your <laughs> your figure yeah, or your health. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's quite a difficult thing. And um, we were talking earlier about safety foods, weren't we? Yes. Yeah. I mean that can also you can see how that overlaps with that idea of impulse control or or sensorily interacting with it. You know you can be stimming through eating a particular mm. food that has a certain texture or taste and so that sensorily is satisfying some stimming potential kind of that stimming to release a repeated action or a sensorial sensory yeah. action that releases stress or um, releases some tension see that thing i mentioned to you earlier about yeah. uh, i was eating my breakfast this morning and it was a bowl of cheerios and i was really focused on this bowl of Cheerios and the way it yeah. feels in my mouth and the way it tastes and uh, my lovely father-in-law was trying to talk to me I don't mind people talking to me while I eat but if I'm eating something that I'm focused on the expectation of me talking back I get quite like I get quite upset because I've got this feeling in my mouth and I don't want it to have to finish early so that I can talk to you yeah. Which feels really selfish, but it is like it, it's it's really sort of ingrained in my in my brain. It's really upsetting to have to interact uh, interrupt that particular action. And you're probably so like immersed in it because the the sensory world is so strong. It's mm. such an important thing. It's so consuming. And you've got multiple senses engaged there: taste and to the actual textures in your mouth, mm. and how your brain is connecting to that. And if there's an intrusion to that then that can that makes sense as to how that can be disconcerting because it's kind of bringing you out of because i noticed um over like the last few months that one of the, my problems with one of the things i find a bit hard about like, having dinner with people is i like the difference between like talking to someone and eating the food and i find it quite hard to switch between the two so i'll either <laughs> take freaking forever to eat and actually manage to finish everything or hold some of the conversation as well keep that going and then go ah oh, but I'm I'm so like I don't know overloaded almost yeah. by having to do both or just indigestion and stuff <laughs> but pull up on air from gulping yes. it down from in between mouthfuls to speak that I then end up having to like leave some of the food why, why can't we separate out those two things <laughs> like, like I would much rather like sit and watch telly while we mm. eat our food and then we can have a conversation. <laughs> yeah, and it's, like, like, it's a practical thing. Yeah. But then like, I, I have days where I'm just like, oh, can I just not do eating today? I'd love to just, on certain days, just not have to do it. Mm. Just tick it off. Just like, I'm just going to take this, this tablet so I don't actually have to stop and do it or think about it too much. Or And so food has been ticked. <laughs> but I... then I have the option of enjoying it. Because I love cooking. I love eating and exploring the flavours and cooking for other people especially but sometimes it's like I don't have the brain capacity or desire to do workout food <laughs> yeah and and so I don't do the cooking in my house mm. um, my other half does the cooking um, and he's a he's a really good cook he does some lovely things but sometimes he'll 
put a plate of food in front of me and I'll have to say, um, I can't eat that bit today because I can't do that texture today. It's not always the same texture that gets me. Sometimes it will be a different thing on a different day. Yeah. And I have, I can very viscerally feel it in my mouth before I've yes. put it in there. Yeah, you can imagine, like, yeah, I can, like that sensory, the sensory experience where you're, you're imagining it so vividly yeah, that yeah. it's like it's there. Do you have that with like, um, so I can't watch things like I'm a celebrity to get me out of here because I can't watch things like bush tucker trials yeah. because if so, they're eating so a grub, empathy. I can feel it in my mouth. Yeah. And yeah. Too, too much it's empathy. Just too much. It's just like, yeah. oh. Well, I've dealt with cringe as well. Like, oh. I feel your pain and I am now shrunk into the size of a black hole. All the mass in the universe is sucked into me because I've shrunk <laughs> into that cringe. It's like, oh no. I've got friends who can't but, come and see me in, in plays and, <sighs> think, and doing stand up yeah. and things like that because they say that they cannot cope with the pressure of it possibly going wrong. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, so they're feeling empathy with all of the actors and with all of the stand-up acts. Because um, I've got a strong background in improv yeah. and I've, I've got a particular friend who's, who couldn't come and see the improv because they're so worried that it's... It's not going to work. It's not gonna that work. Bad. Yeah, so they're <laughs> feeling secondhand nervousness. Yeah. Um, and over empathising. Yeah. Um, that is fascinating. <laughs> yeah. We I, completely I digress. Well. No, I, um, well, not really. Not really. It's all, it's all linked. <laughs> it's Everything is linked. Everything's the same subject. <laughs> <laughs> On that thing, jumping back a wee bit, um, with the uh, impulse control. Mm and like safety foods type of thing um it's so easy i think it's one of the things that comes up linked to neurodivergence of various different types of that kind of problem do you then get with binge eating or just mm. eating through something without realizing you like inhaling a bag of crisps without realizing you've eaten it because you're actually stimming that is you stimming or yes. stuff like that that's that's a fascinating because i can i'm not a massive I don't, I have to eat little, little and often, really, to sustain my body, otherwise I'm very quickly just like, bored of food halfway through, or just, my stomach goes, nope, too much at once, but... And I'm the opposite. Get like, what's its giants, and, uh, <laughs> oh, those things can disappear down my throat very easily. <laughs> Yeah, I um, I have certain things that we can't have in the house mm. um, because I know it's an oral fixation. Yes, that's um, a good point. And there are certain things that I get oral fixation with. So cereals can be a real problem for me. Yeah. So um, I weigh my cereals in the morning because partly because slimming world, I'm trying to keep my weight down, mm. but partly because I would go insane. <laughs> with the amount of cereal I would have. Um, I cannot have uh, Curiously Cinnamon or Cookie Crisp in the house because I would sit there with the box and con continue to fill my bowl until the entire box was gone and then I might have to go across the road and buy more because I'd get an oral fixation on it, on this sensation and the, the taste and the way it feels in my mouth mm. is too good and I can't stop, especially if I'm upset. Yeah. It's it's such a comfort to me to know that I that it's pleasurable um, that I can't stop it. Mm. Um, that makes sense, and it has that extra probably that stimming mm. edge to it because it's releasing, especially for that if you're upset. Mm. It's giving a dopamine hit from the kind of stimming side, releasing stuff, and that pleasurable thing that counteracts some of the upset. It's yeah. almost literally filling that <laughs> void because it's. It, actually it is actually helpful in one way yeah that's that's one of the other things because it's so <laughs> easy to mark certain things as you should never do this um, in society the great thing of black and white the, the neurotypicals black oh. and white thinking so bad at it honestly <laughs> <I guess. laughs> that's an allusion to a common um autism stereotype if nobody if people don't know <laughs> that but it's like autistic people they just think black and white i'm like no no it's, it seems like neurotypical people are the, the black and white the rest of the world is trying to make everything black and white and autistic people are, and i'm also very aware i'm very aware that i'm i'm like i i, I find it really difficult the idea of so I am autistic 
Mm. My friend is autistic. We're completely different. Yes. <laughs> We're completely, it doesn't feel no, at all. It's still a human. Um, so human being. let's talk a little bit about um, mm. safety foods. So mm. are you able to explain what a safety food is? So this is a thing that I only discovered this year because I was only like, I've only discovered my neurodivergence this year and learning about it has really opened my eyes to some of my behaviours. Yeah, my mum. To be honest, my brain just started going safety dance. Uh, safety dance, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> safety dance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, safety foods are. I think it's kind of your go-to food that is always comfortable for you. Mm. Um, especially, you normally more likely to have one if there are foods that you really can't, or you have some sort of struggle with eating in general, or whatever part of that process um of food reaching stomach yeah then, like if there's you something never between, have to worry about there's that there's one like there's some a mix of things which you can always go to mm. like for me it's i have like a safety meal right which is eggs on marmite toast oh yeah eggs on marmite toast i've never tried mm. eggs with marmite what? I can't do that. But it's like a chicky egg, a boiled egg. It's chicky ch egg? Chicky egg, yeah. It's a cloakerial thing, I think. That's, that's chicky adorable. Chicky eggs are a, a dippy, dippy... <laughs> a dippy egg. Dippy egg is what other people... I think chicky egg sounds better. I don't know that's what... That's nice. I if like someone it. could tell me it, I'm going to have to look up the etymology of that. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's nice. It feels nice in the mouth. Chicky egg. Yeah, it does. Chicky egg. It's absolutely brilliant. I can like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. What about you? Uh, so... For me, um, I know when I was a kid, um, macaroni cheese from a can uh, mm -hmm. was a big thing. Okay. Um, I could have eaten that every day. Mm -hmm. But throughout my life, from as far as I'm aware, I uh, from about the age of 12, but I think that's only because they, they only existed from the age of 12, which are Chicago town microwavable pepperoni pizzas. They're like little things, and I am aware that this is like the food equivalent of trash, absolute trash. It's so practical sometimes, though. Just really be able practical. To Three take minutes. Off the, yeah. Three take minutes, off man. The box of um, now eat it. <laughs> uh, I have to eat both of them because there are two in a pack. Oh right, yeah. I have to eat both of them, um, and I'm fully aware that it should be disgusting. Um, there's no nutritional value whatsoever. Well, there is. But I feel comforted <sighs> by it. Yeah. And I know that there is nothing in there texture-wise or flavour-wise that is going to jump out of me. Um, and that is... My, my tastes have changed over the years and I've grown up into different tastes. But that specifically is an absolute safety for me. Mm. That's a really good point. It is I'm, interesting. Yeah. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna yes. wrap us up a little bit. With it. We're gonna do this as a two-parter because we've got quite a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, but you guys listening at home or watching, um, what about your safety foods? Uh, what kind of thing do, makes you feel confident? Why do you think you have that connection to it? You can um, comment on the posts on the podcast. Uh, let us know, and we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs> Okay, folks, that's it for this episode. You can follow us on Instagram at life.inthemind and our other socials are linked in our bio. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Bye-bye. <laughs>